Oh, boogie right. man Ben coming round the band is boogie man Ben. Is boogie man Ben. Greetings, my fellow Frank Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. This is going to be another Salem's Lot Theory video. This is my third one in the series. Previous two I've done, I did one in November of last year and one in February of this year. Uh, first one was talking about uh, my theory on why uh, Ralphie Glick appeared in pajamas when you see him as a vampire outside of Danny Glick's bedroom window and then, then later in the hospital. The other one dealt with Larry Crockett and who drove uh, his car and his corpse to the lake where Ben and Susan were for them to discover it. Um, there was a lot of, you know, people really seem to enjoy, you know, giving their own theories on it. Again, this is just my opinion. This is not saying that anybody else's opinion is wrong. So, again, this is just me being a fan of this well, for four decades um, and sort of just wondering, you know, some of these unanswered questions that we have. This uh, Salem's Lot Theory video is going to be revolving around Susan Norton, played by the lovely Bonnie Bedelia. Now, um, it depends on what version of the film you see. Now, if you, I have, uh, so if you have the miniseries, you know that pretty much um, Susan is taken to meet Barlow after she follows uh, Mark into the Marston house. He, he's on a vendetta to kill Barlow for killing his parents. Um, Straker, Straker sort of overpowers both of them and tells Mark after he ties him up that he took her to meet the man she came here to meet. If you watch the movie, and this was the version that was readily available in the 80s, this is the European cut, um, and this was the one that was on cable television. Uh, it wasn't until 1993 that this was first released, the full miniseries was first released, and at the end of this one, that happens, but you never see the fate of the character. Whereas in this one, you know that she followed Ben and Mark to Guatemala, and it picks up two years later with her finally tracking them down. Um, but how did Susan get out of the house? Um, because we know that Straker took her to meet Barlow, and then we don't see her again until, uh, if you watch the miniseries, until the very end. Um, I have a couple. I have a theory about it, and I've always had this theory because of little things that you notice um, as the movie draws to its conclusion in the third act. Um, so what happens is Susan drives to the Marston house. She parks. She looks up at the house, um, getting ready to leave town, which Ben has told her to do is find as many people as you can and leave town. Um, but um, she's about to leave, and then she sees Mark, uh, who goes up to where the bulkhead is, uh, is able to pick the lock, the lock, get the chains off the bulkhead door, and go into the house. She follows him in there. And as you notice, when she follows him in there, there's stairs leading from the basement up into the house. Now, later in the film, now after Mark has escaped his um, restraints from uh, Straker, after Bill Norton has been killed, after Straker has been killed, uh, they run through that same door. That's the location that Mark falls and hurts his ankle. And if you notice, those stairs have been ripped away. The stairs have been ripped away from their foundation, and they're kind of off to the right-hand side. So what ripped those stairs down? I've always assumed it was Barlow. They trapped Susan in the basement, and it was dark enough so that Barlow could come out and have his way with her feet on her, and then went back into his slumber. And Susan got out through those uh, bulkhead doors that Mark had picked the lock from. That's the logical reason of why she's not there in the root cellar with the rest of the vampires or in the house. Straker let her down there and then just took off. And sort of similar to how he just left, you know, the offering of Ralphie Glick for Barlow. Um, same kind of principle because Barlow is his attack dog. That's pretty much what Barlow is in this uh, miniseries. He's very different from how he was in the book. But even in the book... Um, so I'm going to open it up to this section of the book, and this is where um, the same kind of scenario happens, just it's, it's, it's different in the book, because in the book, Mark kills Straker, but Susan is in the root cellar with Barlow. Yet he went to the cellar door and actually walked down the first three steps before his fear wrapped him in almost physical bonds and would allow him to go no further. He was weeping, and his body was trembling wildly, as if with a gill. Susan, he screamed, run! Mark, her voice sounded weak and dazed. I can't see. It's dark. There was a sudden booming noise like a hollow gunshot, followed by a profound and soulless chuckle. Susan screamed, a sound that trailed away to a moan and then to silence. Still he paused on feathered feet that trembled to blow him away. And from below came a friendly voice, amazingly like his father's. Come down, my boy. I admire you. Now in the book, the sun is starting to go down, so it is still daylight, but it's not fully night yet. So... Again, 
Barlow was in the darkness, in the safety of the cellar. Same thing, just different in terms of the, the fundamentals of what happens in the miniseries. Same kind of thing, just different execution. And the other thing about that is that that's how um, Mark and Ben get out of the basement. He says, Mark, get out. And Mark goes to the steps leading up to the bulkhead doors. So that's that's the way I've taken it, is that's how Susan got out. That's what happened to her. Um, again, that's my theory on it. I don't know what other people think about it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I love doing these. I have a couple other ones I might these do. These are like the big ones for me, the ones that I just laid out because they're the ones I see addressed so much on, you know, like Salem's Lot then and now and on message boards. Um, you know, these unanswered questions. So I hope everyone enjoyed this. Remember, it's all for fun. If you guys have a different theory than I did, that's awesome. Share it with me. I would love to hear everybody's thoughts on this. And again, thanks so much for stopping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well talk to you again real soon take it easy stay scared as always and remember you can do nothing against the master Peace. hey my fellow fright fiends i just want to thank everyone for supporting boogeyman ben's horror zone if you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to please hit the subscribe button down below click the bell notification so you're updated every time i drop a new video i try to drop a video at least once or twice a week uh, the Horror Zone is a passion of mine, and it really makes me happy that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Peace.